Welcome to the next video in our series about forest management. In the previous episode, we covered early stand management and everything that is required to help seedlings survive the first five years of life in the ground. Today, we will be talking about late stand management. After young trees are free to grow, they need some attention to ensure optimal continued growth and eventually prepare for harvest. Thomas May will help us understand thinning, Sarah Phipps will discuss inventory and timber cruising, and Joe Waters will cover road construction and maintenance. My name is Thomas May. I'm a forester with Roseburg out of our Roanoke Timberlands in North Carolina. As trees age into maturity, their demand for resources increases. Trees need three things to survive, light, water, and nutrients. In a stand that is overstocked with too many trees per acre or trees too close together, the individual trees are in competition with one another for these resources. That increased competition has a negative impact on their growth. In nature, overstocked stands will thin themselves through this competition. The dominant trees survive and the non-dominant trees die. However, this can take years and hinders the overall growth of the dominant trees while also building up fuel loads in their understory. When we step in and thin out the non-dominant trees at the right time, we speed up this process and improve the growth rate of the whole stand while also reducing the risk of wildfire from high fuel loads. A machine called a feller buncher will work its way down every fifth or sixth planted row of trees, approximately 60 to 100 feet apart, cutting trees selectively from in between the access rows. The smaller diameter, lower quality, and undesirable species that would compete with our higher quality dominant trees are targeted to be removed. A skidder then pulls the trees to the landing. The trees are then either chipped on site or hauled on log trucks to the mill. Once the weaker competitors are out of the way, the dominant trees have all the room and resources to continue to grow as efficiently as possible. My name is Sarah Phipps. I'm an inventory forester working out of the Western Regional Office. One of the most important steps in the process of planning a harvest is timber cruising. We need to know what we have on our land in order to make decisions about when and how to harvest. Timber cruising involves measuring the characteristics of a sample of trees and then extrapolating that sample data across a whole stand of trees of similar type and age. An inventory forester will set up a grid of plots to sample, then count the trees by species and measure for diameter, height, and potential log value. A few of the best trees in the stand are sampled for age using a special tool called an increment bore, which cuts a plug of wood from the tree where the forester can count the annual growth rings to determine the tree's age. All of this data is brought back to the office where it is summarized in an estimate of the total volume of wood for that individual stand is calculated. Timber cruise data can be used immediately for an upcoming harvest, or it can be extrapolated using a model to project volume growth as a stand ages to help us plan for future harvests. My name is Joe Waters. I'm a forest engineer. I work out of our Western Regional Office. Forest engineering is another crucial step in preparing for harvest. Many of these stands are in remote locations far from any major existing road systems, and in order to operate in these areas, we need to access them. We have teams of forest engineers who are specifically trained to navigate the unique challenges that come with designing and constructing roads in the forest. There are regulations and best management practices for how roads and landings should be designed to prevent environmental issues, mostly revolving around water quality and soil protection. A poorly designed road or stream crossing can cause excessive sediment and debris to enter the waterway, or potentially obstruct the natural flow of the stream. We use culverts for most of our stream crossings. These culverts are installed in line with the natural path of the stream, allowing water to flow unobstructed underneath the roadway. Throughout the year, our engineers and foresters maintain these culverts to make sure they aren't damaged and are in working order. Another important part of road construction that must be carefully designed is the landing. Landings are large flat areas used for processing and loading the harvested logs onto trucks. The landing must be designed to allow enough room to safely process logs while supporting the weight of the equipment, all while minimizing soil compaction and sedimentation. Our engineers are very skilled at designing and maintaining our road system to protect soil and water quality while providing access to our timberlands in preparation for harvest. From thinning operations and inventory analysis to road construction and maintenance, our foresters and engineers have a lot of work to do as a forest stand approaches the harvest age, all of which improves forest health and productivity not just for the next step in the process, but for the long run. Thank you for joining us for the late stand management episode of our forest management education series. Next time, we will be learning all about timber harvest.